it's like this game that I know that he knows that mm. I know, <laughs> and, he, and and oh, it was a really uh, pressure time. Yeah. It was a little bit uh, different the years. I was seven years in Kiel. Uh, I came there as a very young goalkeeper. And now you're sitting here with the, the zebra on your chest. Uh, did they ever forgive you that you went to Flensburg? Ball across to Dylan. Now he double in flight. Oh, what a start. Yeah, into the net. He does it again. Yes, I'm going to work. On the Champions of Europe. Then it is time to talk handball again, everybody. And uh, what a humbling experience for me, Ben Kunko, because I'm sitting here in Cologne in the mecca of handball together with two legends of the game. Let's start, off, uh, let's start it off here with our regular, um, with the one who captained his team to the title. Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Thomas, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh, it's really nice to be here again in Cologne. In the, um, we, we talked about a lot about Cologne, but uh, I think it's the biggest event in handball. And... I'm thrilled to be here in a different role mm -hmm. for already uh, four years and next to Matthias. We played against uh, many, many times. He played in Barcelona for a short time in his career and I'm really happy to, to have him here with, with us. Yeah, uh, Matthias Andersson is our uh, today's guest um, and he's probably the guy who shaped the German goalkeeper coaching uh, like uh, no one else. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. A little bit excited because, like you said, Cologne, uh, Final Four, uh, it's, it's really something special. Mm. Uh, actually, what is your, your last memory of a player here in Cologne? As a player in Cologne, uh, it's the title 2014. Mm. That was my last uh, time here as a player. I knew this was coming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, he asked I, I, I knew, to answer. I knew, you know, sorry, I knew. You know, but he's this kind of guy, you okay. know, he liked to tease me. But you scored your, you, you scored your seven yeah. meters. So, so, okay, yeah, we go to this uh, mm -hmm. already. Yeah. This seven meters, mm -hmm. you know, that season I didn't shoot any seven meters at all, maybe three, four times. And when I was going to the seven meter uh, line, I was thinking, did he saw any videos about me? Where did I shoot the last uh, penalty? I'm sure he didn't saw videos, but at this moment it was a lot of pressure, you know? It's like this game that I know that he knows that mm. I know, mm. and, he, and, and oh, it was a really uh, pressure time, yeah. It's a classical one. Yeah. He knows, you knows, I don't, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, eventually, did you watch the videos? So uh, did you analyze him and uh, his, his shooting, his seven meter shooting? I think I was pretty sure where he wanted to shoot, yeah. And okay. if I remember it correctly, it was on my left side, uh, <laughs> down, but uh, he scored it either way. But uh, fortunately, it was enough for us. So uh, it was, I think it was a typical Cologne weekend. No one expected us uh, to win here, uh, ourselves maybe as well not. But uh, after the two games, it, uh, it was incredible. and. Uh, it's always something special here. I mean, one always talks about Cologne and the miracles. Do you have an explanation for it? Why does Cologne attract so many miracles? I think it's a special place. It's uh, historically the, the arena is always full, always a lot of people, a lot of handball people from all over the world, not just from the four teams, but as well handball interested people. We know it's sold out uh, in advance, so it's always full. The, the excitement is there and uh, two games in such a short period, the games that are here, they're always good teams. You have mm. to earn it to be here, but when you're here, everything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, uh, Victor, uh, let's, let's have a look at your career a little bit uh, as, as you are our guest today. And uh, Victor just said it in the introduction uh, that you had a short time in your, in your career where you uh, played for Barcelona. What's the story behind that? Why was it uh, <clears throat> only two months that you played for uh, uh, for Barca? Uh, I came to, to help out because David Barofet was injured and uh, the other goalkeeper was Thomas Swenson. Uh, we, knew each, we knew each other from the national team and they put in a call because in Sweden our season was finished earlier. And then uh, in the summer uh, I got a call from, from TV Kiel because they also had an injured goalkeeper. Henry Fritz was alone there. Steiner Ege was injured and uh, David Barofet was back. So as a young, young goalkeeper, I said, okay, let's, uh, let's try this one. Mm. And uh, Kiel then with a lot of Swedish players as well, it felt like a good choice. And uh, in the end, you uh, ended up playing a long time in Kiel and uh, playing together with the best goalkeepers in the world, actually. Um, 
talking about Henning Fritz, talking about Thierry Omaier. What were you able to learn from them as well? Because uh, when you joined, uh, you already had some experience, but you weren't the oldest of all keepers. No, uh, of course, it's what I mostly learned was it's, it's a mental thing. Mm. Uh, it's about attitude. It's about how you prepare. It's what you do every day in training, how you attack the preparation, how you attack the game. Uh, that's the main thing. Mm. And now that you are in your function uh, as a as a goalkeeper trainer um, or as a goalkeeper coach, uh, are those the things that you try to teach your uh, your trainees? Yeah, of course. We talk a lot about uh, attitude, about performance, uh, to use everything you get in the training, to always be able to take something with you from every training session, be prepared for every game, find your preparation, not to do one time I do like this, oh, that didn't went well, I try something else, mm. that you try to find your thing, so you're feeling sure of yourself when you do go to the game. And then, of course, uh, the fun thing as well is in the coaching in the game, uh, what, can you, what can you do there? As, as a former goalkeeper, top, top goalkeeper, and now goalkeeper coach, this position is very special in our sport. And I have a, a theory, or it's a, at least my way of thinking. I don't know. I, I'm really interested to know what you think about. Uh, in, in top teams like Kiel, Barcelona, Flensburg, Besprem, etc., um, they normally have two top, top goalkeepers. My opinion is that it has to be one on top of the other and everybody needs to know who is number one and who is number two because i think that mentally goalkeepers they prepare better if they know what is expected from them and i want to know what do you think about this is it good for the team to have two number ones or is it better to have in your opinion one number one and one number two i think it's uh, a very good question it's very interesting as well uh, but I think the most important part there is that you know what you have, that the goalkeepers know what you have. How do you handle it? Do you have a number one and do you have a number two or do you have two number ones? But the keepers have to know what's the situation. How do we as coaches see it? How do we want to handle it? Uh, the, the most thing that you don't want for the keepers is to, to think about it. How is it? Am I the number one? Am I the number two? Am I going to play a lot? Am I going to be changed in? Am I going to be changed out? So you have to give them a situation where they feel comfortable, where they know what's what's happening. So yeah, then the the, the, the information needs to flow uh, both sides, and and they need to know. Yeah, I agree that if they know the situation, if they are two number ones, and just performance is uh, uh, the one that is choosing uh, who is starting or not. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, Performance uh, yeah. and tactical situations and uh, who is suited best for the for the opponent or things like that. Uh, the same with the national team. I think it's very important that everybody knows their roles, no matter what they are, but they know what the roles are. And for example, for for tomorrow's for today's game or for other games that you are with German national team or with Kiel, whose choice is it the goalkeeper that it's going to start is it fully yours you speak with philip or with alfred and you decide together or how is it going we we speak together the last decision decision is always from the head coach because they have the ultimate responsibility but uh, most of the times we we are agreeing or we are having a discussion and then think oh this this will be good mm -hmm. so but i think it's important as well as a goalkeeper coach to know that the ultimate decision lies with the head coach because they have the responsibility for the team. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, talking about those roles and uh, that the goalkeepers do need to know their roles. What was your role in Kiel then when uh, Henning Fritz came back and when you had Jerry Omaier on your side? It was a little bit uh, different the years. I was seven years in Kiel. Uh, I came there as a very young goalkeeper, uh, came together with Henning Fritz who uh, was a German national team goalkeeper and I just want to learn, get my playing parts uh, during the years I played more and more um, and then uh, Titi came, I think it was 2006, 2006 in the summer and then we were three goalkeepers for a short period uh, and then uh, I played like one year alone with Titi and of course that was a little bit a diff uh, different situation and uh, that's also partly why I chose to go to Brussels after that to get something else uh, to try something new, and uh, yeah, it went, uh, it worked out well. 
not just Großwallstadt, but uh, eventually Flensburg as well. Um, and now you're sitting here with the, the zebra on your chest. Uh, did they ever forgive you that you went to Flensburg? Uh, I think they forgave me that I went to Flensburg, <laughs> but I don't know if Flensburg forgave me that I went back to Kiel. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question, actually. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, no, I, I was always, uh, always feel very welcome when I uh, when I went to back to Kiel as well as a as an opponent. Uh, it was w always a warm welcome. Uh, so it's uh, it's always been good like that. And how were the derbies, when, especially when you have seen both sides? So uh, not in your first stint in Kiel uh, in those seven years, but uh, when you went to Flensburg, how did you experience the, your first derby uh, as a Flensburg player? I must say the derbies uh, for me, that is uh, one of the games that you have to enjoy. It's mm. incredible games. It's all, almost like it's to be in Cologne. The derbies Kiel Flensburg are really something special. and. Uh, like you said, I played a lot of them on both sides and uh, it was a privilege to, to play so many and they were always intense and uh, yeah, fun games, fun games. But the first one, uh, I think we lost at home uh, against Kiel. No, that's not true. My first derby <laughs> with Flensburg was in Kiel and we lost by, I think, 10 goals. So not a good start there. <laughs> I know I know the feeling to lose in uh, Kiel by 10. <laughs> That's not a good one. No, it can't happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> too early, too early, <laughs> probably too early. Um, but yeah, um, maybe then let's uh, yeah keep it in, in the north here because uh, you yeah came from Sweden and uh, you're still a goalkeeper coach for your your uh, home club, Istad. Um, a goalkeeper coach for Kiel as well and for the German national team has your week more hours than mine or how do you uh, how do you fit it all into one regular working week unfortunately not yeah, uh, yeah it's turned out like that uh, of course uh, the German Federation and uh, Kiel are my main main objectives uh, that's why I do the most of my work but of course when I'm I'm home in Ustad both kids are playing handball there of course uh, you want to help out a little bit as well and uh, you know, it is handball is, is always fun. And uh, if you get the possibility to help out as well with kids, uh, it's always fun. And it really sounds like it that you wouldn't ever get enough from handball. I mean, uh, your career has been quite long um, and it has even been extended. We will uh, come to that uh, in a bit. Um, but yeah, you don't ever get enough from handball. Yeah, of course, it's, mu it's too much sometimes. Uh, I'm looking forward to the vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, after this weekend, uh, I really do. It's been a long season, but uh, it's turned out like that. It wasn't planned that it should be that much humble. But uh, when you get uh, those opportunities as well, you want to take advantage of them. And mm. as well, it's a, it's a lot of fun and it's humble, yes, but it's also working with, with people, working with goalkeepers, working with other coaches, coaches and that's, that's also fun as well. When, when you retired, did you know you know, uh, that, that you wanted to stick to handball, to, to stay with handball and to, to be uh, doing what you're doing today? Yeah, I knew, knew that I wanted to do it a little bit, uh, maybe not full time or more than full time like it's now. Uh, but I knew that I wanted to, to try at least to do something like I experienced uh, myself, the help that I got, like from Mats Olsson. Uh, from the Swedish national team uh, who I played with in, in Ustad when I was a young kid. I wanted to try to give something from that back, but I didn't know that we should be there that much. And how would you define yourself as a goalkeeper coach right now? So did you take a lot of things from coaches that you had in the past that you're using now or you are, uh, uh, you know, taking some things and doing it your way? How, how would you describe yourself as a goalkeeper coach today? Of course, I think I'm very influenced by the things I learned from Mats Olsson. Uh, we still work together and discuss many things, try to try to get better. So, of course, I have things from every coach that I had, but I still try to do my own thing. And as well, for me as a goalkeeper coach, is not what I want the keepers to do. It's like, what do they want to do and how can I do them better from their situation? I don't want, it's not like, I did this, you have to do the same way because that won't work. Now that you are in your position and uh, watching a lot of handball and uh, still talking about those those great memories uh, in all the derbies and uh, your short time in Barca, now coming back to Cologne, do you ever miss playing at all? Yes. <laughs> short answer. Yeah. Uh, when I stopped, I didn't. 
not for a second. I, I was finished. I was done. Uh, but then two years after, I was convinced, or they talked me into doing a, a comeback. And after that, uh, you had the feeling, okay, this was fun again. <laughs> I guess they'll do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, of course, uh, I said it to, to Christian Sprenger as well yesterday in training here in Cologne. It should be great to be playing again, you know, mm. just for this weekend. Yeah. But uh, as well as I know, those those days are over and um, a whole season would be too much. But uh, of course, I think it's in, in these events uh, when we come here, we, we miss it. You know, mm. what, what we don't miss is the everyday training, probably. But we miss the competition. We miss mm -hmm. the atmosphere in the locker room with the team. And, and we miss those kind of games that every player wants to play. And those the games are in Cologne. How quickly did it go for you that you uh, were talked into that comeback? It took some time, actually. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I said no a couple of times. Yeah, it was a difficult situation because I now how, know how difficult it is. Uh, how I said I finished because I wanted this, um, for me to decide now I stop. Uh, I don't want everyone to say, oh, he should have stopped 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I want to stop as long as I was healthy. And it was a good situation to stop. And um, then uh, I know it's very difficult to stay in the goal. And I said now, I think a couple of times. And then they say, OK, can you try it? Can you come to the training, uh, be a goalkeeper again, see how it goes, sit on a bench? And uh, yeah, from that it went to that it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, how long did it take you to uh, even make that decision to retire? Um, I think that's one of the hardest decisions you take as a as a player. Uh, I think uh, if you change a club or something like that, that's a tough decision. But the decision to retire, to stop playing, I think that's uh, the hardest one. And I actually made it easy for myself. I signed my last contract in Flensburg 2016 and I said, when this one is finished, 2018, I'm stopped playing. Mm. And then I didn't think more about it. I said, then it's it's over. That worked well. Yeah, it worked uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, then uh, why did you did you keep on playing? So you went to Kiel afterwards? No, I when they asked, I had to you had to take this to uh, this chance. And as well, when you're working there, you know, the people, you know, the players, they ask for your help. It's very difficult to say no. And, mm. uh, you know, I'm working. Uh, I've played with Philip myself. I've played with Victor when they ask you. Can you try it? Can you help us out? Uh, it's difficult to say no. Yeah. And for me as well, it was, I was still sort of in the game. I was in the training session. I did some shooting in the goalkeeper training. I watched a lot of videos. Many of the opponents were the same opponents who I played against. Mm. So I still have, had something in the back of my head. So yeah, it was difficult to say no. And um, it was quite fun, yes. <laughs> that is great. That is great. But uh, well, obviously, you are enjoying yourself uh, in the life after the career here as well. Um, even though your week is, is completely packed uh, with, with Kiel and uh, then when there are national team breaks, you are on, on travels with the national team as well. Do you get to enjoy that life after the handball careers uh, at all? Uh, I think you enjoy it in a different way uh, because uh like uh, Victor said, you don't miss the everyday training session. Mm. You don't miss the travels, uh, but you miss the excitement and you get some of that. And as well, working with people's, people like teammates, but still not teammates. It's mm. very interesting as well. How, how is a regular Tuesday in your life? So <laughs> how, is, how do you manage your time? Because one thing, it was very hard for me after retirement, we have been all our lives we know where we have to be at what time you know this time is video session this time is training this time the bus is going this time the plane is going and how how did you manage to do the, that it has to be a lot of planning uh, because like I, like i said i have some some dif different tasks and uh, when i'm in keel and a training session then it's more or less like a player you have this time you have to be there but the other time, you know, I have this and this task from the Federation. I have to do th prepare this for the next education or I have to write this uh, about goalkeeping. Uh, and then you have to plan it. Uh, I have an old paper calendar that I use so I can plan it properly. So I have get some some 
some kind of structure into it because uh, otherwise it's difficult uh, to get everything done and also the things that you're not used to do like the training uh, preparation debriefing those things you used to do you did them as a player you do them as a coach but the other things uh, you have to write them down and plan them as well and also how many games do you watch per week too many <laughs> oh I, I i say always say that i don't watch many games because handball is fun because i watch all the games that i have to watch yeah, yeah. and that's more than enough uh, but yeah. that's a lot of games uh, i think i counted last year in january uh, 2023 when we played the world championship i think i uh, analyzed and cutted uh, 65 games in a month that is a lot there's uh, more than two per day that's uh, <laughs> that's a lot and uh, it's like that you have to prepare the game mm. then it's your own game you have to debrief it then it's preparation for next game and so it goes on yeah. during a whole month so that's uh, very intense and uh, after that you you're quite tired yeah uh yeah now that we are at the german national team the olympics are uh, actually just around the corner for us uh how's the german schedule looking until paris 2024 uh the players have some days off now after the season we are meeting up on the 30th of june here in germany uh during uh like i think 13 days of training camp mm -hmm. and ending that with a with a game in dortmund against uh, france then uh, we have four days off and then we meet up in Ludwigsburg for two games against Hungary and Japan do another couple of training days there and then we go by go over to Paris how optimistic are you it's uh, Olympic is really uh, as well as Cologne is something special um, it's not like a normal humble tournament uh, and it's also the toughest humble tournament because uh, only the best teams there so it would be very very tough but very exciting and looking forward to it, yeah. And actually, how do you experience the development of Germany under Alfred Gislason? Because when you're looking at the pure results, you get better each and every tournament. So uh, that uh, that development actually held on until this tournament. So uh, finishing fifth in the World Championship and now fourth in, in the Euro as well. If we're thinking further, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not uh, saying it out loud. Um, but uh, how's the German national team? I can do team? the math. I can uh, do yeah, the yeah, math. Yeah. Yeah. How's the German national uh, team development uh, it's, developing under Alfred? It's an interesting young team. A lot of young players uh, who are developing. Like Julian Köster, who's been there yes for now for two, three tournaments uh, with us, get a lot of experience. Johannes Gola, they're all still young players so it's an interesting team and uh, it will be interesting to see how it goes uh, in the next couple of years yeah absolutely fair but so uh, yeah. he doesn't want to make any no. uh, any predictions you <laughs> no know? of course not yeah. but of course <laughs> that's <laughs> totally fair it, it, then it, you will call me say you yeah. said that yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's like predicting for cologne it's useless yeah. because yeah. everything can happen you know? absolutely yeah. absolutely uh but yeah so until then uh, you do have some time off uh, for yourself as well uh what are your vacation plans uh some family time uh my son is graduating uh next uh, next friday then we have some vacation. Thank you. Thank you. We have some uh, vacation days planned uh, sometime with the family. Go to Spain. Just say it. Go to Spain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know Spain is always great. Uh, I was in Spain last year, actually. So, yeah, Spain is always great. N not these days. We're actually going to Croatia for a couple of days mm -hmm. this summer. But uh, other than that, we're at home in Sweden, just uh, relaxing a bit. What kind of uh, vacation goer are you? Uh, do you go into a cabin? Are you a camper, a hotel guy? Uh, I'm not a camper. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to get both things, a little beach uh, and as well a city or mm. or or those things like that, but not just lie on the beach two weeks. That's that's too too relaxed for me. Do uh, you know a, a city where they have a beach right around the corner? I know there are some, some, I, I some, <laughs> there are some nice ones. Yeah, I know. Uh, actually, uh, one of the greatest. Yes yeah all right cool fair enough then uh, i would say thank you thanks a lot for your time and for the insights it was a uh, very interesting talking to you uh, a little bit about your uh, career about your uh, your family and your uh, well your life after handball so uh yeah thanks a lot for joining us thank you thank you it was a pleasure to have you here and to know a little bit more about how is your days now and to get people to know how much the coaches are working because yeah. uh, you know the players when 
the training is stopped they go home and they don't think about anything else you know but the trainers are still watching videos cutting videos and thinking about the game so thank you for yeah, giving us the, the insights that's a, that's true that's <laughs> that's a different uh, aspect as well as a goalkeeper it was a little bit different because you watch a lot of videos for yourself as well yeah but it's like you say when you're you're a player you come to training you you get her go home and then that's it but for a coach it's a little bit more yeah yeah we have to look at the watch here we are still uh, before the semi-finals as we are recording uh, this podcast and uh, we can't take too much time off of the goalkeeper coach of TV Kiel. <laughs> that's uh, where uh, we would cut it and uh, we hear each other again the next time when it's time to talk handball again ball across to Dylan Nahi double in flight oh what a start Ooh, yeah. into the net he does it again yes. Yes. Oh, the champion